Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the mobile game tutorial. Alright, so, um, last time we did some curve, we did some ramps, we did all that kind of good stuff here. Let's actually make some, um, jumps. Jumps, so we can have some game mechanics going on. So, I'm going to go ahead and just open up the, uh, what is it already? Oh, 3DS Max, right. So, I'm going to open up 3DS Max, and we are going to make a jumping pad. Now, what I'm thinking about doing is making it either 4x4 four four or 1x1. One one. And if we, if we make it 1x1, one one, just look at this style over here. So the, the size of one of these styles would be the size of our jump. So is that too small? I'm not, I'm not sure yet. But what I'm thinking is we'll make it 1x1. One one, and if we need to make it, say, uh, big like these two square tiles, then we can simply copy one and paste it right next to it. Okay, so um, as far as the texturing goes, I'll just put the same texture on for now so we can actually just have the UV right and later, later on we can create some more texture whenever we're ready to make our game look more pretty um, texture wise. Right, so I have a brand new 3DS scene right now. Let's just make sure that my home grid is on 1 and that my scene is in meters. Okay, so. Like I said, what I felt like doing um, was to make a one by one jump pad. Really simple, actually. So let's just take this. Oh, by the way, we're making a one by one jump pad, but if we want to scale it up, we can simply just, you know, put a scaling on two and we'll have a two by two jump pad. So that works. That also works uh, the other way around. So we can make it two by two right now and have it be one by one. That being said, let's just make it one by one. So a simple cube like that, and uh, we can, you know, it doesn't have to be really complicated. We can simply take this, 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 remove all of that, and then connect these edges. So this one over here, I'm going to extrude it on the right. So I will take my move tool with W, hold shift, and drag this on this axis. And then what I'll do is I'll go back inside. Oh, we could actually do weld. Okay, so we'll do target weld in the edge selection, take this one and paste it down here. There we go. Then I'm going to take my border selection, so that's number three on the keyboard, click on this, hit cap, take the one on this side, then hit cap. And that's pretty much all we have to do. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the material editor by pressing M choose diffuse and inside of diffuse bitmap then we go to our project folder when mine is around here oh no that's not it here it is assets artwork texture tile green right like I said we can always change the texture uh, whenever we want but we'll be using this one just to have a look at what it gives us in terms of UV. So right now the UVs is obviously not okay. So what we're gonna do is we are going to fix that by selecting this face and only this face. So choose this one, then add a unwrap UVW modifier. Then I'll simply do a, um, <clears throat> I'll do a square selection. So I'll take this face, mapping, flatten mapping, and we get this result, which isn't really cool. So what we'll do is we'll take the edges, I mean, not the edges, the vertex that are up here, and we'll just bring them up to there. You can also go down here and just type in manually one, like so. And that would be our little jumping pad. All right, so here is our object. Let's move it to the center of the scene, zero, zero, zero. Reset the X form, going into Utilities, Reset X form, Reset Selected. Go back here, right click, Convert to Editable Polygon. And then let's do, uh, let's go in the hierarchy tab, Effect Pivot Only, and then move this upward. So make sure that the green axis is pointing upward. Like this, so 90 degrees, and also let's make sure that this faces, um, the jump faces the blue axis or the Z axis. So right there, that will do the jump. I will call this jump pad, hit save. And now let's find our folder once more. So 
here is mine I can't seem to find it <laughs> all right so assets artwork models and this is the jump pad all right let's go back in our game and have a look at what it gives us oh so here is our object here it is that's our jump pad let's rotate it around a little bit like so and we can align it like that then put the right material on top of it so tiles green remove the animator add a mesh collider or I think we can do the box collider I'm not sure let's actually try it out box collider oh no no we can't obviously is there any other collider we can use we could be using none of this okay so let's do the mesh collider like we used to and we can now take this and just move this light bit on this way and now actually put this inside of our prefab folder so I will go ahead and do that drag and drop prefab folder okay so let's try this out actually I'm not quite sure what kind of result we get because the uh, it is so steep right so let's do with the boost oh that's actually cool I don't dislike the result actually you know what I'm going to take these like that and actually try to do a continuation on that like so by the way I just remake my level every time it's not it's not something really hard to do and that might have been a little bit too far oh actually that was good great now like I said earlier we could actually be taking these and uh, removing one of those then just scale them up so maybe two by two by two that would mean we would now get uh, this kind of result so that's a simple shape that we can just play with the size of it inside of unity that way we could even be um, scaling this down so it's less of a steep angle just like this and we could be even making it bigger in X or I was thinking about Z in this case like that so there's a lot of things you can do with that of course and uh, the texture can always change this is a really te simple texture but it does the job for now and it helps us with the UV so basically as you can tell this works and that can actually be fun right so now it all comes down to making the level um, a little bit later on of course we still have some art to do we still have to make the uh, destroyable door the switch and also the player texture that's that's one of the most and then after that the UI would be a good thing to do also something I've changed that I forgot um, to do in the video is I have removed the skybox because skybox the uh, default skybox really annoys me so that's pretty much what I did to do that I went up here inside of window lighting and you see the skybox over here I put that on none for now but a little bit later on of course we'll have a uh, skybox as you can see you can pretty much put any kind of texture in there if I show it here it is you've been putting this your awesome texture that you made but that's uh, a little bit confusing to be honest so what I've did is I just went ahead and I, I went from that to none which will uh, make this darker you will have your your tiles darker and that is because I've also changed the shader that's usually what you, you get because it takes um, the color from the sky and it puts a little bit on it what I've did is I went into my shader and instead of taking the standard shader I went to unlit texture now of course it's up to you and you can pretty much do whatever you want uh, when it comes down to the shader but I'll be using this for now and uh, l later on we'll have lighting and we'll actually turn this off it's always visible it always draw the color of the texture without taking effect the uh, the lighting because right now in our scene I don't think we have a lot of lighting we have uh, a directional light and that's it even if we were to turn this off this texture doesn't change because it's on it now as far as the rest of the navigation uh, model goes it's pretty much up to you to make whatever you want right now I don't feel like I need any more I mean you could be making levels with only these and um, they could be still quite fun and I just missed that um, but yeah you know you're always free to go back in 3ds max and just create the models you want you could be creating your entire level in 3ds max and just uh, importing the mesh in there that's something I plan on doing a little bit later on uh, maybe not in videos but just for this game in general because I have more control over them inside of 3ds max but of course right here you can simply 
just go ahead and duplicate stuff and quickly prototype at least and maybe remake your level if you wish inside of 3ds max but that's going to be pretty much it for um the, the navigation art now the next thing we need to tackle is the wind box the switch and the gate that comes with the switch so uh, also destroyable wall so all of these i think we're going to be able to do them in two episodes add some animation and particle effect around it because when we destroy that wall would like to uh, you know you would like to actually have some kind of dust going up or maybe even create some cube effect where it just spreads into little cubes so that's what we're going to do for the next few episodes guys so thanks a lot for watching if you enjoyed this video if you learned something please leave me a like really appreciate that if you have any question or comment um please go ahead and leave them in the description below if you'd like to share your art you can do that on the facebook page you don't have to share the model maybe just even a small screenshot of your stuff that would be really helpful for some people because reference are really good to have when you try to be artistic and i will conclude the video on that guys so thanks all for watching once more and i will see you in the next episode